Tuvalut as protesters in the north blockaded traffic at the northern gates along the administrative boundary line. Special units of the Kosovo police force, uh, armed with long weapons, deployed to the northern crossing points and armored vehicles. These units, in one instance, utilized tear gas and uh, percussion grenades in an attempt to disperse the protesters. Over the uh, ensuing several days, the numbers of the both protesters and special police units increased. On 26 September, as uh, yet unexplained fire was set at the vehicle registration center in Zobin Potok, while uh, overnight on 25 uh, uh, September, an undetonated uh, ordinance was discovered in another public office in the north. For its part, the Serbian army deployed a platoon strength reaction force in the vicinity north of the administrative boundary line and conducted several, several military overflights in the same area. Mr. President, international uh, officials such as myself with long experience on the ground could hardly be surprised uh, by the reaction to the strong arm effort to implement a change of poly policy, given the history of mistrust and the sensitivity of community relations in the North. The fact that this effort was uh, not discussed through established channels, in the first place, the EU facilitated dialogue on freedom of movement, resulted in an uh, avoidable yet potentially dangerous escalation of tension lasting for 10 days. Throughout the good offices of uh, European Union High Representative Borrell, supported also by United States diplomacy, an agreement was achieved to de-escalate this uh, hazardous uh, situation. It provided for the withdrawal of Kosovo Special Police Units from the north and an increased K4 presence to establish a safe and secure environment. An interim solution was agreed on license plate validity uh, with discussions to continue during the following six months. What we witnessed in the North could be called a bruising episode, but it could uh, far too easily have been turned into a real hemorrhage. The volatility of the situation can also be understood by the direct personal intervention with the Pristina and Belgrade leaders by NATO Secretary General uh, Stoltenberg and uh, President of the European Commission uh, von der Leyen, among others. While closely monitoring the situation, my mission also played a tempering role on the ground, making use of our experienced presence in the north in order to encourage calm and reduce the likelihood of an accidental or uncontrolled confrontation between uh, special police in the public. I also raised my voice against unilateral actions, calling for responsible leadership and for taking of uh, and immediate steps to reduce tensions and continue uh, political dialogue. Then just this past Wednesday, Kosovo police special units were once again deployed into the north as a part of what has been described as an anti-smuggling operation conducted in several locations in Kosovo. It is questionable whether KFO was properly informed in advance of the deployment of special police units. Over the course of the day, this operation provoked further protests and clashes 
that resulted in a significant number of injuries among protesters, police, and uninvolved civilians, including in one case, a life-threatening wound caused by police gunfire, in circumstances uh, still to be clarified. Civilians in North Mitrovica reported injuries in their homes from tear gas in uh, uh, percussion grenades, which were in use by police over several hours. Protest protesters uh, drew stones, and according to, to the Kosovo police, some suspects uh, uh, used firearms to engage the police. As uh, EU High Representative Borrell observed, uh, observed afterwards, and I quote, unilateral and uncoordinated actions that endanger stability are unacceptable. Issues must be addressed through the EU facilitated dialogue, end of quote. Accounting for context in uh, exercising responsible forethought are essential to avoid unintended consequences and uh, strategically risky escalation. The latest actions deepened the mistrust felt among the Serb uh, population in the north and led to a strong reaction in Belgrade, making a responsible recommitment to dialogue all the more imperative now. Mr. President, I have spoken in details about the events of 20 to 30 September and other issues with both Prime Minister Kurti and President Vucic. I have also been engaged in conversation with the diplomatic actors involved, especially those representing the United States, the Russian Federation, and China, as well as the uh, K-4 commander and EU officials. Um, there are several important lessons, or perhaps better reminders, that emerge when it comes to belgrade pristina relations, regional stability, and indispensability of the dialogue process. Dialogue can and should be the mechanism used to avoid the dangers which are less often visible. But just as real as they have been during these past 20 years, history in the region has tragically and repeatedly shown the ostensibly, ostensibly small incidents, misreading of intentions, and uh, outright mistakes can trigger uh, an unstable security escalations that puts lives at risk and benefits no one. Mr. President, international actors, including ourselves and the members of this council, welcome the recent encounter between President Vucic and Prime Minister Kurti on 6 October during the EU Western Balkans uh, summit in the presence of French President Macron and uh, German Chancellor Merkel. Still, it would be premature and overly optimistic to say that we can see a resumption of real commitment to the dialogue, which remains the only forum in which responsible and result-oriented discussions can continue. I raise the importance of continuity in the dialogue with both uh, President Vucic and Prime Minister Kurti during my talks with them. This is a daunting challenge as well for the EU institutions who are charged to lead this process in a meaningful way. What I noticed and heard in my meetings with the representatives of the international powers uh, represented in this council is that despite the other differences, they do clearly share an understanding that there is no reasonable alternative to sustain engagement in dialogue. This is a minimum to help avert the retrograde potential exhibited 
these uh, past weeks. It's important further to support all initiative, uh, initiatives that may help to promote responsible relations among all neighbors in the Western Balkans. From my point of view, trust continues to be the element in shortest supply. Trust in good faith negotiations, trust between representatives in their constituencies, and trust in the institutions that are established to deliver both. Observing the many cycles of the dialogue over more than six years, my personal conviction is uh, remained uh, strong that if the vast majority of people from the various communities, including women and uh, young people, do not feel themselves to be part of or to have a stake in uh, the process of uh, uh, political discussions and negotiations, if there is no mobilization of the society, and if they're not, at the very least, uh, aware of what is uh, even being discussed, then all efforts to change relations and resolve long-term tensions are uh, designed to remain elusive. Uh, a facilitated agreement on paper is a vital objective, but having a paper in hand does not equate to having a solution in hand. Those who could exert more influence uh, on uh, negotiating parties to succeed are mostly worn out by uh, tired uh, uh, arguments in nationalist uh, political sloganeering. This is true in Kosovo, it's true in Serbia, and it's true across the entire region. Mr. President, as Kosovo is approaching another local elections in two days' time, the focus uh, at the central and municipal levels should now be trained upon delivering the high expectations of people for change. Why was turnout so high in the past general election? In fact, what the people call for is more responsive and responsible government, including tangible follow through on the reform agenda promised during the campaign uh, period. Even more, uh, voters clearly want public institutions to work in favor of uh, the welfare of people in contrast to the past. They want greater equality of economic and social opportunity, fairness, accountability, and reliable recourse to the rule of law. Accordingly, Prime Minister Kurti, who uh, on at least two occasions had shared with me the major priorities of his government, assured me of his focus on this reform agenda, on his reform agenda, calling it uh, his top, top priority. I urge the government today publicly, as I have done privately, to focus on rebuilding the bonds of trust so long broken between all the communities in Kosovo and the political leadership. Rebuilding trust demands a sincere approach to the belgrade pristina dialogue process, as well as building an encouraging atmosphere among the different communities within Kosovo. Dealing uh, maturely, and responsibly, responsibly with the past is a precondition for stability, which includes avoiding the instrumentalization of divisive ethno-nationalistic uh, themes for political advantage. I have had many conversations with regional leaders during the past year, including with President Vucic and Prime Minister Roma of Albania, and I want to stress that practical uh, regional approaches have uh, begun to evolve, utilizing the commonality of interest and in, uh, increased prosperity as an engine to effect a more stable region. Like the building process, upon which it was uh, partly modeled, the Open Balkans Initiative uh, promoted by President Vucic, Prime Minister Rama, and Prime Minister Zayev of North Macedonia, is, in my view, 
a promising step exactly in this direction, despite differences over its details in both. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic continues uh, to present an unprecedented challenge to Kosovo and the region, curtailing its uh, spread and mitigating its socioeconomic con consequences is another matter that behoves cooperation across borders, boundaries, and ethnicity. The United Nations, through COVAX donations, has helped Kosovo vaccination program. And UNMIC and UN Kosovo team have been working closely with authorities to encourage and promote acceptance of vaccinations and preventive measures. measures. I am proud that UNMIC and the UN Kosovo team contributed to increasing the COVID-19 testing and vaccination capacity in Kosovo, provided humanitarian assistance and equipment to the most vulnerable and have focused as well on uh, uh, objectively monitoring human rights protection in relation to the pandemic. With strong support of, from headquarters, uh, we successfully completed the vaccination vac uh, com campaign for the United Nations staff and dependents, international and local, not only UNMIC, but also all the other UN entities on the ground. Mr. President, in accordance with our mandate, the mission continues widely to engage on the ground across multiple sectors and areas of work, anchored by an agenda dedicated to promote in supporting trust building among Kosovo diverse communities. I've spoken already of trust as a major preoccupation of my time and vision for our mission, a strategy which have forged uh, and uh, refined through experience. Such work uh, is indispensable uh, and uh, must continue uh, for the reasons I stressed earlier. We have used the important instrument of our programmatic plans to set the tone and uh, to seat the realization of nearly all the objectives laid forth in the UN uh, Trust Building Forum I hosted in 2018. Through combined efforts of UNMIC, the UNKT, and our many international partners working hand in hand with members of different communities who believe in a peaceful future together. From uh, our work uh, uh, promoting the women and youth peace and security agendas, to supporting multilingual education, to funding and co sponsoring a debate on television and new media platforms to providing legal assistance and education for access to justice. We have helped to model the people-centered approach in society level engagement articulated by the Secretary General's reform program in the common agenda. This is the catalyst role to which our mission remains dedicated, engaging with, the, uh, with an empowering voices for change while applying our creativity, understanding, and analysis of the real circumstances to promote long-term and sustainable benefit, benefits for all. In my view, such work is the bedrock of a sustainable agreement, without which the vicious cycles of public mistrust and the use of divisive rhetoric for short-term uh, political gain will simply repeat themselves. The events of the past week with their uh, uh, propensity to unravel the steady but fragile progress made in rebuilding trust among communities are of deep concern to me and should be a warning to all members of this council. Mr. President, I thank the members of the council most sincerely for their attention and for their continuing support throughout all these years uh, to myself and uh, of UNIC. Thank you very much.
I thank Mr. Tannen for his briefing. I now give the floor to His Excellency, Mr. Nikola Selakovic, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Serbia. Distinguished President of the Security Council, esteemed members of the Security Council, distinguished special representative. I would like to thank Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Guterres, and Special Representative of the Security Secretary General and Head of UNMIC, Mr. Tanin, for the report submitted and for their efforts made towards the implementation of the UNMIC mandate. I would also like to thank the members of the Security Council for the continued attention they have devoted to the issue of Kosovo and Metohija. The Republic of Serbia highly values the activities of the mission of the United Nations in Kosovo and Metohija and supports it in carrying out its works as efficiently as possible pursuant to the UN Security Council Resolution 1244 and undiminished in scope aiming to build and preserve lasting peace, stability and security in the province. Mr. Tanin, please accept the expressions of the gratitude for your engagement and the cooperation we achieved during your term in, of office. Mr. President, deep regret and concerns are raised by the fact that the security situation in Kosovo and Metohija in the past period has been marked by an increasing number of various ethnically motivated attacks and incidents targeting Serbs, which was also stated in the report. That the provisional institutions of self-government in Pristina continue to take unilateral steps and refuse to implement the agreements reached in the Brussels Dialogue, and that institutional discrimination against Serbs, attacks on the sites of Serbian Orthodox Church, and the undermining of the economic sustainability of Serb communities in the province have continued. We are witnessing that dangerous provocations by Pristina are taking place every day at an accelerated pace thus seriously threatening the safety of Serbs in Kosovo and Metohija and directly violating the agreements and arrangements reached within the Brussels Dialogue. The latest violent incursion of the so-called Rosu units into the northern part of Kosovska Mitrovica on 13 October is the ninth incursion of its kind. Tear gas, shock bombs, the unbridled violence are becoming a matter of everyday life of Serbs, for Serbs in the north of Kosovo and Metohija, and thus must be stopped immediately. In the last attack, with firearms and chemicals used by Pristina Special Forces, 71-year-old Verica Jelic died as a result of chemicals used in the intervention. Ten unarmed civilians were wounded. One of those, 36 years old, Srećko Sofronijević, shot in the back with an, with an automatic rifle, critically injured. A three-month-old baby who miraculously remained unharmed was also the target of the shooting. The false excuse for the latest unilateral action as EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borrell called it, was the fight against organized crime and smuggling. Ladies and gentlemen, Serbia is strongly against organized crime and smuggling, but the members of the UN Security Council should know that such an important and general global goal, which we all share, was cynically used for an armed attack on unarmed civilians, which began with an automatic rifle raid of pharmacies in which patients of Serbian and other nationalities are supplied with vitally important medicines. Four days before the local elections in Kosovo and Metohija, in order to gain votes in an irreasonable and inhuman way, fully motivated by separatist goals, the current provisional institutions of self-government regime used medicines on which people's lives depend to prove its position on the status contrary to the UN Security Council Resolution 1244. Only a few days earlier, another provocation on the part of Pristina led a, to a dangerous crisis when personnel of the so-called Rosu unit, armed with long firearms and reinforced 
with armored vehicles were deployed to administrative crossings between central Serbia and Kosovo and Metohija, Brnjak and Jarinje in order to remove Serbian license plates and replace them with temporary ones, thus violently preventing the free movement of citizens. These events do not fall within the reporting period covered by the latest report of the UN Security Secretary General on the work of UNMIC, but it is incumbent upon us to address them on this occasion in order to have everyone understand how dramatic the situation on the ground has been and how serious the consequences of Pristina's unilateral actions can be. The incursions of heavily armed Pristina police formations, composed exclusively of Albanians, into the north of Kosovo and Metohija under various pretexts and motives, with the use of excessive force, are provocations that have an extremely dangerous potential to destabilize the already sensitive security situation on the ground. The goal of the latest incursions of Pristina Special Force personnel into the north of province was to provoke Serbs and additionally intimidate them with the demonstration of force, as well as to provoke Belgrade to react, to react hastily in some way. It is obvious that with such moves, Pristina aims to erase the 10 years of dialogue, which is the only way to resolve open issues. These provocations once again demonstrate that the provisional institutions of self-government in Pristina do not only intend to implement everything agreed in Brussels dialogue, but that their goal is to completely deny dialogue as a means of resolving problems. An effective response to Pristina's lack of credibility and their dangerous play with fire, which could have unforeseeable consequences, cannot be provided by calling on both sides to constructiveness and restraint which has long been a manner in public communication of some important factors in the international community. There is only one source of destabilization. It has its name, and that is the provisional institutions of self-government in Pristina. And after the events of 13 October, it is clear that it can needs to be stopped, stopped by urgent and decisive action on the international community. It is now quite obvious that these are no longer sporadic and isolated provocations by Pristina, but that this is an organized campaign of ethnically motivated violence and discrimination against Serbs. We also express our concern over the latest imposition of tariffs by Pristina on certain products originating from central Serbia which was made public on 8 October. We remind you that the unilateral decisions of Pristina to impose duties on products from central Serbia in November 2018 resulted in a de facto complete trade blockade and a long-term stalemate in the dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina. In contrast to Pristina, which persistently seeks to raise barriers towards central Serbia through unilateral acts, Belgrade is persistently and consistently working to liberalize the flow of people, goods, services, and capital, which is in the basic goal of our Open Balkan initiative. Note Macedonia and Albania joined this initiative, but Pristina did not. Distinguished members of the Security Council, in the period from March to September this year, which is covered in the latest report, close to 100 ethnically motivated attacks were carried out against Serbs, their private property, religious and cultural heritage sites. The increase in the frequency of attacks was accompanied by the strengthening of the intensity of ethnically motivated violence, which more and more often targets children, the elderly, women, the few returnees present there, as well as churches and other property of the Serbian Orthodox Church. This systematically intensifies the abiquo sense of insecurity and the remaining of the remaining Serbs, but also deters potential returnees who are in fact being told that local Albanian communities can attack them with impunity 
and prevent them from returning to live in their own homes. The most striking example of the position of Serbs in Kosovo and Metohija is the case of the displaced person Dragica Gašić, who moved into her apartment in the municipality of Djakovica again in early June. In that town, to which local Albanians proudly refer as a place forbidden to Serbs, Mrs. Gašić, on her return, first faced physical and verbal attacks by citizens of Albanian nationality living there. Instead of being provided protection, that seriously ill woman that became a victim of institutional persecution as well, that the local self-government bodies and the police unlashed against her. Since this, is, since this is a person who is the first and only Serb returnee to Jakovica after more than 20 years, it was to be expected that at that moment, at least civil society organizations would attempt to protect her rights. However, NGOs from Jakovica soon joined the activities aimed at the expulsion of Mrs. Gašić, including those receiving funding from international donors for projects related to strengthening democracy and the rule of law. I must also mention the latest attack on the house of only remaining Serbian woman in the center of the city of Peć, retired teacher Rumena Ljubic, whose windows were stoned twice in just 24 hours on 13 October. Dragica's and Rumena's fate in frightening reflections on the real situation of human rights that almost everyone of over 200,000 displayed Serbs and non-Albanians would face in Kosovo and Metohija, provided that they gather the courage to return to their homes in the province after more than 20 years. I would like to remind you once again that, the, that since 1999, only around 1.9% of internally displaced Serbs and other non-Albanians have achieved a sustainable return to Kosovo and Metohija as required by United Nations Security Council Resolution 1244. Therefore, I believe that the aforementioned will encourage the members of the SC and the inter international presence on the ground to devote priority and attention in the future to the issue of return of displaced persons, which is an important part of the UNMIC mandate under UN Security Council Resolution 1244. I therefore thank the Security Council in particular for keeping this extremely important issue in focus and for calling again in the conclusions of this report for the creation of conditions for the sustainable return of internally displaced persons and the su sustainable reintegration of returnees. Distinguished members of the Security Council, Serbian medieval monuments in Kosovo and Metohija, including monuments that, uh, that due to their exceptional values but also constantly being subject to threats, are inscribed on the UNESCO list of world heritage in danger, are still among the most endangered cultural heritage in Europe. I wish to recall that there are over 1,300 Serbian churches and monasteries in Kosovo and Metohija. Attacks on Serbian cultural and religious heritage are at the same time attacks on the identity of Serbs in the province and directly affect their sense of safety. A striking example of disrespect for Serbian cultural and religious monuments in province is the case of Visoki Dechani Monastery, the monastery which has been target of attacks and shelling several times since 2000, is still secured by K4 forces due to being under a threat. It is faced with a series of hostile actions and the perpetrators are not deterred by the fact that this is a World Heritage Site. Despite frequent declaratory statements, even the decision of the so-called Constitutional Court of uh, Pristina five years ago confirming ownership of Visoki Dachani Monastery over 24 hectares is not respected. Therefore, we welcome the assessment made by the UN Secretary General in his report. Dear Mr. President, 
the Republic of Serbia remains committed to finding a compromise political solution as prescribed under Resolution 1244, which will ensure lasting peace and stability. We firmly believe the dialogue and the implementation of the agreements reached are the only right way to resolve all open issues. As a state committed to the respect of international law and a member of United Nations, Serbia opposes any attempt at establishing an artificial balance between the parties in the dialogue as well as the relativization of responsibility for unilateral acts. We note with concern that not even eight years after reaching the Brussels Agreement, the establishment of the community of Serb municipalities has not been intended, initiated. Although Belgrade has fulfilled all its obligations under that agreement, there are also numerous and repeated examples of Pristina violating the and or obstructing agreements reached in dialogue in the areas of energy, justice, freedom of movement, and the visit of officials. One such example is the verdict sentencing Ivan Todosijevic to two years in prison which is also pointed out in the Secretary General's report. The Brussels Agreement was directly breached, which was also stated by the representatives of European Union. With its conduct, Pristina caused immeasurable damage to the reconciliation process in Kosovo and Metohija. Despite the interpretation from the European Commission that this is a violation of Brussels Agreement because Todosijevic had to be sentenced by a panel consisting of the majority of judges of Serbian ethnicity, Pristina still does not take any action in this regard. Pristina also continued with the practice of banning Serbian officials from entering the territory of autonomous province of Kosovo and Metohija. We believe that it is important that the international community and especially the European Union as a guarantor of the agreement firmly insists that the provisional institutions of self-government in Pristina start implementing all the agreements reached, distinguished members of the Security Council. As before, the Republic of Serbia remains fully committed to resolving the issue of missing persons, as also demonstrated through full cooperation with relevant inter international mechanisms, as well as participation in the work of Working Group on Missing Persons. We expect that the representatives of the provisional institutions of self-government in Pristina will fulfill their obligations. Bearing in mind, mind everything I delivered here today in my address, we hold the position that the international presence in Kosovo and Metohija pursuant to UN Security Council Resolution 1244 is still necessary. In addition to UNMIC, the, pre the presence of K4 as a main guarantor of security and the ULEX, due to its engagement in the field of rule of law, is also important. Mr. President, I would like to emphasize once again that Serbia fully supports respect for international law. Comprehensive implementation of UN Security Council Resolution 1244 and activities of UNMIC in an undiminished scope and with adequate financial resources so that the missions fulfills the mandate entrusted to it under the resolution. Thank you for your attention. I thank His Excellency, Mr. Selakovic, for his statement. I now give the floor to Ms. Yosa Osman Sandriu. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Security Council. It is an honor to be here with you today as the President of the Republic of Kosovo. Just 22 years ago, I was listening to the United Nations meetings on the fate of our people and our nation while I was seeking refuge in the mountains to avoid the shelling and grenades of the Serbian army against all of our people. Today, 22 years later, as the newly elected president of the Republic of Kosovo, I have the privilege of representing my people, all the people 
of Kosovo. The truth is, I am only able to sit amongst you today because of the determination, perseverance, and struggle of the people of Kosovo to see our country free from oppression and from a genocidal rule, to see our country independent. Our story is far from over, and much of our potential is yet to be fulfilled. But our future is bright, and I'm confident that one day we will join you at this table, part of the family of nations that today make up the United Nations. Dear members of the Security Council, we have been through too much, and our sacrifice has been too great to take steps backwards. That is why we look to the future with strength, courage and confidence in ourselves and in the potential that our young republic holds. Kosovo, as someone described it recently, is a beacon of hope in the region. The people of Kosovo stand for freedom, for human rights, for rule of law and democracy. They stand for the values that make this world a better place and values which this organization works hard to promote. But hope only thrives when there is trust. Our citizens believe in a future with greater employment opportunities and a strengthened rule of law. Today, they believe in a Kosovo where equality, inclusiveness, and respect for all prevail. And we are working hard to turn their expectations into reality. The truth of the matter is that the trust of the people in their institutions has never been higher. From a war-torn country to a country hit by the pandemic, I can proudly say that Kosovo has emerged as one of the most vibrant democracies in the region. This year, we are even facing a prospect of a double-digit growth in GDP. What a potential foreign investor would find in Kosovo today is a country with truly talented, highly skilled, tech-savvy and multilingual youth where 70% of the population is under the age of 35. A country with a system of low and extremely competitive taxes, as well as completely new legal infrastructure which is compatible with EU legislation. A country with a 90% penetration rate that has enabled us to become a tech hub in our region. It is also worth noting that, as a historical net importer, Kosovo's products are now becoming household names. In markets such as Germany, Switzerland, Italy, the United States, the United Kingdom, and many more. Our products are even making their way to countries such as Ukraine, India, China, and we hope that political relations will soon reflect the existing economic ties. In other words, Kosovo is proving to the world its transformative spirit across many areas of economy and other sectors. Despite being the last country in Europe to start administering vaccines, Kosovo today is not only vaccinating the fastest, it has surpassed the region and some EU member states in the percentage of the population that have been inoculated against COVID-19. But above all, Kosovo is thriving in an era of unprecedented institutional stability and trust. Our reforms to strengthen the rule of law are being conducted at a record level, and we hope to become an example of effective and meritocratic governance, not just for the region, but also beyond. I can give you endless statistics about our successes. The story of Kosovo is, and always has been, a story of its people. Today, that is the story of three women who are now Olympic gold medalists, Mailinda, Nora, and Distria, who have turned our young republic, a two-time Olympic runner, into a threefold Olympic gold medal winner. Or indeed, the inspiring story of Fahri Ehoti and the women of Krusha, perfectly portrayed in the film Hive, which I invite you to watch, Kosovo triple award winner at Sundance, and hopefully soon to be Oscars winner, a film that is the strongest testament to the consequences of the war and the perfect embodiment of resilience, survival, and triumph. 
Kosovo story is also the story of an almost 14-year-old independent country where one of the highest voted members of parliament is Vasvije Krasnici, a brave and outspoken survivor of rape during the war. And where Saranda Bogovici, a survival of a massacre under, un, against her entire family, is now the vice president of the parliament. Where the votes of the citizens in the last elections produced a parliament composed of more women MPs than the EU average, and where the country is led by a woman for the second time as well as endless successes at home, our incredibly engaged and successful diaspora all over the world continue to make us want to burst with pride. From Dua Lipa to Rita Ora, to world-renowned football players, academics and scientists, thank you for being our greatest ambassadors and showing the world the best of Kosovo. Today our country is a genuine representation of a peace-loving and peace-exporting nation. Our soldiers serve alongside U.S. troops in peacekeeping missions, and our soldiers continue to display unmatched professionalism. In the midst of one of the biggest crises in recent history, our people and our institutions opened their hearts and minds to the citizens of Afghanistan seeking refuge. This is not only a reflection of who we are as a people, it is also a confirmation to our readiness to stand by our allies, and actively contribute to the international community. As former refugees ourselves, no one better understands their suffering than the people of Kosovo. There's too much to share. For now, I ask you to keep your hearts and minds open for the people of Kosovo. We will do the rest. I assure you, the youngest country in Europe will not only exceed your expectations and continue to strengthen its statehood, we will also keep making our allies proud. Dear members of the Security Council, as we discuss the UN mission in Kosovo, I want to take a moment to address you all as members of this chamber. UNMIC was established 22 years ago under extremely different circumstances. Following the NATO intervention to put a halt to Serb war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide against the people of Kosovo, this council authorized the establishment of an international civilian presence to provide an interim, I repeat, interim administration. The International Court of Justice, a UN body, has confirmed that the legal regime of Resolution 1244 was only supposed to work until the final status of Kosovo would be determined. That status was determined once and for all on the 17th of February, 2008, and Kosovo's declaration of independence was, according to the ICJ, in full compliance with international law as it was made pursuant to the proposal of the UN Special Envoy, Mr. Ahtisari. Upon Serbia's request, the UN General Assembly asked the ICJ to rule on Kosovo's declaration of independence. The ruling was unequivocal. No provision of international law was violated. So we call on Serbia respect international law, as we do so for these members that are still in doubt with respect to Kosovo's independence. The Republic of Kosovo today is a free, sovereign, independent country and an increasingly prosperous country. This should serve as a sufficient evidence to make it clear for everyone that UNMIC has not only overstated its mandate, but it's also there in contradiction to the interpretation of the International Court of Justice. While we thank them for their work of the past, we urge you, members of the Security Council, to put your budget to better use. And while they are using this budget, I invite them to be impartial and not send an entirely distorted message of what happened in the north of Kosovo, therefore showing unprecedented bias and only contributing to tensions in our region. Your Excellencies, painful irony that Kosovo is still not a member of the United Nations is that it is one of the biggest champions of peace and security in the world. Every single citizen of our young republic understands the devastation of war and it is something we desperately want to avoid anywhere in the world. The people of Kosovo are true internationalists at heart. They want to see the world nurture existing relations and create new ones with people of the countries in every corner of the world. We are passionate pro-Europeans, we are passionately pro-NATO, 
We believe in a united Europe as a political and a values-based project. We believe in the peace and stability that NATO provides. And equally so, we profoundly believe in a world led by the values embodying the United Nations. As long as Kosovo is left out of UN bodies and other international organizations, the collective effort of this family of nations will always be one step away from fully delivering on its mission. The common project of preventing future pandemics, fighting climate change, meeting the sustainable development goals, or combating international crimes will be at least one step away from being fully complete. It is therefore that I say today that it is long overdue for Kosovo to have the support of all, to become a member of organizations such as the WHO, UNESCO, Interpol, and other international organizations, and to be given the deserved seat at the next conference of the parties, to be able to discuss alongside all of you the common fate of our humanity. Ultimately, we see the United Nations, its agencies, and other international organizations, memberships as a coronation of our historic, historical effort to promote well-being, peace, and security at home and abroad. This is why these memberships are so important to us and why they form a key pillar of our foreign policy efforts. Kosovo also understands too well that regional cooperation is at the heart of the ambition to join the EU, but these initiatives must be EU rule-based, and that is why we are proudly part of the Berlin process, the only initiative that aims to have our region join the European Union. Let me make one thing clear in case anyone is in doubt. Kosovo has always been the peaceful neighbor, a neighbor that does not use its institutions to interfere in another's internal affairs, a neighbor that does not use its institutions to also create destabilization in another, a neighbor that cherishes and takes pride in the successes of another. It is exactly in the spirit that we see regional cooperation today. Our region is small, but friends of Kosovo within it are in great numbers. Friends who recognize our struggle and our reality. Friends who walked side by side with us towards building our joint achievements and sharing common challenges. Unfortunately, we cannot say that this is the case with Serbia. But what I can say today is that we as Kosovo are committed to making this the case with Serbia as well. The dialogue between the Republic of Kosovo and Serbia is designed to lead us towards meeting this goal. Yes, Kosovo has, is, and will continue to not only sit at the table, but also actively engage in the dialogue where the final goal is mutual recognition. What it is not though, it is not that this dialogue is going to save the personal career of any politician in Serbia involved in the process. It is not about coming up with dangerous adventures that belong to the 19th century. It is not and will never be as our counterparts may like, about the status of Kosovo, which was resolved once and for all back in 2008, with the support of most of you. The dialogue is between two equal parties, and the parties should be treated as such. But most importantly, this dialogue is about the end beneficiaries. It is about the citizens, the people of both countries, improving their lives and building a more prosperous and secure future for them. Despite having been victims of war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide, Kosovo today continues to be a strong advocate for peace and for engaging in the dialogue with Serbia in good faith. This has been particularly clear in the recent months as Kosovo continues to bring ideas to the table while Serbia rejects everything without engaging with the content. Serbia must be encouraged to come to the table with an open mind and with ideas that will move the region forward. And most importantly, it needs to understand that the reality of an independent Kosovo will never change. But our patience will not wear thin. We will continue to be a positive force and a constructive party to the dialogue and to present the interests of our country in the best way by also seeking justice for the forcibly disappeared during the war and look for ways to instill sustainable peace. If we want to be successful in this endeavor, we need our counterpart to start implementing. 
Kosovo has implemented the vast majority of the agreements, over 90% according to Brussels. And when you speak about the creation of a Mudno ethnic association, as specified in the agreement signed in Brussels, it was submitted for a seal of approval from our constitutional court. However, it is this very court that has ruled that the agreement is in clear violation of our constitution, because any court that interprets our constitution, a constitution that is founded on the idea of promoting and embracing multi-ethnicity, cannot stand behind an agreement that would end up doing the exact opposite. By significant contrast, according to the European Union itself, the guarantor and the mediator of this dialogue, Serbia has not implemented two-thirds. Two-thirds of the agreement signed. So please, Mr. Selakovic, do not lecture us about non-implementation, and this wouldn't be the first time Serbia ignores their legal obligations, but how do we expect this to be a credible process if they sign but never implement? Despite the agreement reached in 2013, which Mr. Selakovic referred to a couple of times, the government in Belgrade has not yet dissolved the illegal criminal structures that exist in North Kosovo. They continue to incite terror and intimidate the Kosovo Serbs living in the north and do not allow them to integrate into the society of which they are part of. They also engage in challenging our institutions and instilling rule of law in that part of our country. But esteemed members of the council, let me be clear on this. The fight against organized crime, whether in north or south, is non-negotiable and must be uncompromising. To negotiate and compromise with crime is to become part of it. This Wednesday's rule of law efforts by Kosovo institutions, multi-ethnic police institutions, can in under no circumstances be labeled as an action in the North because it was an action in all parts of Kosovo against persons of different ethnicities who had one thing in common. They were directly engaged in smuggling and organized crime. Let me inform you of the reality of this effort in rule of law. The prosecutor and the judge who carried out the investigation against this organized crime were both Serbs, and so were most of the police officers in the north. While eight Kosovo citizens were arrested, out of them, six were Kosovo Albanians, one was a Bosnian, and only one was a Serb. Both NATO, K4, and the US and other Quint embassies have all been clear that this was the rule of law action against organized crime all over Kosovo. So since we were quoting, let me clarify what the real position, public position of K4 is. According to K4, the operation took place in several municipalities, including those in the north. In terms of approvals, the Kosovo police has full authority and responsibility for exercising the rule of law actions. And when executing this, they don't need additional permissions. Let me also quote the United States. According to the United States, they are concerned from the response against the police action, which was an action in favor of the rule of law all over Kosovo. The violence directed towards the police, media, and citizens is unacceptable and needs to be addressed. According to the United Kingdom, acting against organized crime is in the interest of all citizens of Kosovo, and we support Kosovo government in upholding rule of law throughout the country. Efforts to obstruct this action with violence, as well as the inflammatory rhetoric, only serves to aid those seeking to create divisions between communities in Kosovo. And according to Germany, obviously after the statements of the Serbs, they said, stop, the comparison of today's police action with the crystal night is unacceptable. Such comparison contribute towards narratives of Holocaust distortion and denial. Protect the facts. This is exactly what I'm doing here, excellencies, protecting the facts, and I also invite the SRSG to include these quotes in his next report. Esteemed members of the council, there is a crucial difference between what used to be in the past and what is happening now in our rule of law efforts. 
look, this type of crime has always been multi-ethnic. Et et the crime, organized crime especially, has no ethnicity. However, what is different now is the fight against this crime is multi-ethnic. Kosovo Albanian and Kosovo Serb police officers side by side one another are fighting organized crime. Serb judges, Albanian judges, Serb prosecutors and Albanian prosecutors are fighting organized crime alongside one another. So this is the difference. The fight against organized crime is multi-ethnic. Thus, it shall be successful. However, there is more to it. We witness threats from the illegal structures of Serbia in the north and their violence regularly in the everyday lives of Kosovo Serbs. Perhaps the most concerning is what we have witnessed and evidenced during the past few elections, also detailed in the reports of the European Union as well as the reports of the US State Department. When it comes to the agreement on license plates, unfortunately throughout the last decade, Serbia never upheld their end of the bargain. They instead forced citizens of the Republic of Kosovo to remove license plates in a derogatory and dehumanizing way every single time they'd cross the border. When this agreement expired, Kosovo introduced the principle of reciprocity as provided in the agreement itself. In return, Serbia used its illegal structures to incite violence and commit acts of terrorism as they burned down public property and attacked them with explosives. Meanwhile, they approached military vehicles and Russian MiGs combat aircraft a mere one kilometer away from our border. And in an unprecedented, unnecessary and a hostile act, the Russian ambassador to Belgrade alongside his military attaché nonetheless, showed up to give Serbian troops words of encouragement. Dear friends, in the 21st century, what so-called peace-loving nation threatens stability in such a flagrant manner? Look, our history does not begin at the negotiation table in Brussels. We are all old enough to remember the pure destruction and devastation that took place during the 90s in the Western Balkans. It is no coincidence that Serbia's efforts towards instability are happening simultaneously throughout Kosovo, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro. This plan has an author and its name is the Serbian government. This should raise the alarm bells around the world, in particular for allies who worked with us to bring peace in the region. Vucic talks in plain and clear language when he expresses his ambition and dangerous ideals. He makes no attempt to hide his admiration for his former boss, the butcher of the Balkans, Slobodan Milosevic. According to him, and I quote, Milosevic was a great Serbian leader whose intentions were certainly for the best, but the results were poor. Let me talk about the results of that regime. Around 140,000 innocent people lost their lives during the Milosevic genocidal wars in former Yugoslavia. In Kosovo, over 13,000 people were brutally murdered, 20,000 women were raped, and over 1,600 people are still forcibly disappeared and are still missing to this day, and they are in mass graves in Serbia. We have the highest number of children lost per capita if we compare it to any other war in former Yugoslavia. More than one million Albanians ethnically cleansed from their homes in Kosovo. What happened in Kosovo, in our region, happened in front of your eyes, happened in front of the eyes of the world. No single attempt by Serbia to deny these crimes or revise history will ever be successful as long as we have a voice. But dear colleagues, the words never forget shouldn't simply be a slogan. We should never forget the true face and the real aims of the Serbian regime. Unfortunately, Milosevic's ministers are ruling the country today. Their strategy might have changed, but their goals remain the same, aided by pure propaganda similar to the ones that you've heard today. When Vucic talks about, I quote, the ability to shoot targets from a distance of nine kilometers deep within enemy territory, he doesn't just mean Kosovo. Within that perimeter, you have eight countries of the region six out of which are NATO members. 
When he talks about creating a Serbian world, he means the greater Serbia, words that you have all heard during the 90s. It is not enough to say you believe in European ideals and also be the mass producer of ethnic division and hatred across the Balkans. It is not enough to say you believe in human rights while you systematically abuse the rights of minorities through passivation in Presheva Valley and other areas of majority Albanian population. Passivation is ethnic cleansing through administrative means. It is not enough to say you believe in the rule of law but show no signs of fighting crime and corruption. It is not enough to preach freedom of expression and strongly exercise media control. Dear colleagues, we have a cancer at the heart of Europe, fueled by fascist desires to create the Serbian world and aided by their ally Russia. Unless we all wake up to this fact urgently, I fear we will witness the resurgence of Serbia's aggression. Kosovo's independence is permanent and irreversible. And the sooner everyone comes to terms with this reality, the better it will be for peace and stability, not only in our region, not only in Europe, but for the world as well. The Republic of Kosovo's right to exist cannot be denied, it cannot be stopped, and most importantly, it cannot be ignored. The majority of the world has recognized our young republic. The time has come for the rest of you to do so. In the words of Judge Drinidade from Brazil, a judge at the International Court of Justice when they decided on our Declaration of Independence, and who commented on Serbia's crimes in Kosovo, I quote, states exist for human beings and not vice versa. Serbia cannot invoke territorial integrity to commit grave breaches of international humanitarian law and then try to use this as a shield or shelter to escape from the reach of law and to enjoy impunity after shocking the conscience of humankind. And then he continues, an international organization like the United Nations created on behalf of the peoples of the world is fully entitled to help the people of Kosovo in becoming masters of their own destiny. Since, in this way, the United Nations would be acting in pursuance of its own charter." Unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been more than a decade since Judge Trinidade, as part of the ICJ, ruled on Kosovo's declar declaration of independence and its compliance with international law. And since then, the people of Kosovo truly are masters of their own destiny. So dear friends, I urge you to come and talk to us, to hear our side of the story, to see the truth and nothing but the truth, to visit the independent Republic of Kosovo and to see for yourself the progress that we have made and to witness firsthand the warmth of the people of Kosovo. The Republic of Kosovo is here to commit to joining all of you in facing and addressing the new challenges that lay ahead and to jointly celebrate new successes as they come our way as part of the United Nations family. I thank you all for your attention. I thank Ms. Osmani Sadru for her statement. I now give the floor to the members of the Security Council who wish to make statements. I give the floor to the representative of Niger. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank His Excellency Nicolas Salakovic for his statement. And I'd like to thank Mr. Zahir Tanin and Ms. Osmani Sadru for their briefings. My delegation welcomes the positive political dynamic prompted by the legislative elections of the 14th of February 2021, as well as the general policy statement of the new Kosovo government, which prioritizes management of the COVID-19 pandemic and tackling socioeconomic challenges. The normalization of relations between Belgrade and Pristina requires the constructive engagement of the parties in the dialogue process. Therefore, to achieve conclusive results, the parties must show political will and 
resolve to make mutual concessions. My delegation expresses its deep-rooted concern at the resurgence of tensions and incidents affecting religious and cultural sites. Hostility towards the voluntary return of displaced persons also rep represents an aspect that should be granted particular attention. To that end, we encourage the implementation of specific measures to protect religious sites, and we call for respect for the protection of uh, the rights of displaced persons and repatriated persons, as well as their social reintegration in the safest and most dignified conditions. Consideration of the women, peace and security dimension is a key factor in the success of a peace process. That is why we call on the Kosovo authorities to guarantee the full and effective participation of women in political processes and in all aspects of socio-political life. To conclude, my delegation encourages the adoption of measures aimed at strengthening the rule of law, human rights and social inclusion in the implementation of the government's reform program. We call on Belgrade and Pristina to step up their efforts to prevent any stalling of the dialogue. And we pay tribute to the commitment of regional and international actors to support both parties towards a lasting and peaceful settlement. Thank you. I thank the representative of Niger for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of France. Merci beaucoup, thank you very much, Mr. President. I wish to thank the special representative of the Secretary General for his briefing. I also welcome the participation of the President of Kosovo and the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Serbia. The uh, resolution of the dispute between uh, Belgrade and Pristina is a European security issue. Recent tensions in north of Kosovo are a reminder of this. In this regard, we welcome the er interim arrangement arrived at in Brussels on 30 September under the aegis of the Special Representative of the European Union, Miroslav Lajcik, and we urge both parties uh, to arrive at a lasting solution on this issue. This crisis is a further illustration of the fact that there there is no alternative way, neither for Serbia nor Kosovo, no other path than a comprehensive, definitive, legally binding agreement to lastingly resolve the dispute between the two countries. Uh, hence, we urge Belgrade and Pristina to pursue constructive dialogue in a spirit of compromise facilitated by the European Union. There is an important need to avoid any unilateral act that is liable to undermine this dialogue. The agreements arrived at through dialogue since 2011 have provided tangible benefits for the population and they are, remain fully relevant and binding. We urge both parties uh, to respect and implement all uh, and, uh, of their obligations through the dialogue without further delay. Our first president, Mr. Macron, is fully committed to this in his uh, in the, with this, uh, facilitation efforts of the special representative of the European Union. We also wish uh, to voice support uh, for the reform efforts undertaken by the government in Kosovo, specifically vis-a-vis -vis the fight against corruption, for rule of law, and for economic and social development. We applaud the adoption of a strategy for rule of law 2021 to 2026. These efforts are vital for European rapprochement, as is mobilization for participation of women on equal footing in politics and society and the need to respect human rights. We urge uh, the effort to combat impunity to continue and for there to be accountability for the perpetrators of the grave crimes with the cooperation of the specialist uh, chambers for Kosovo and the uh, specialist uh, uh, prosecutor's office. We thank Mr. Tanin for his initiatives at the helm of UNMIC over the past uh, six years in coordination with other regional and international stakeholders, specifically the, the EU rule of law mission, ULEX Kosovo, and UNMIC continues to advance security stability rule of law and respect for human rights in Kosovo and the region. We are firmly of the view that 
Serbia and Kosovo have a shared European future. The European Union is the leading commercial trade partner, the leading investor, and the leading donor to both countries. Uh, the European Union has demonstrated its mobilization, specifically in the fight against COVID-19. Normalization of relations between Belgrade and Pristina is vital for lasting stabilization of the Western Balkans and for European rapprochement of both countries. France will remain committed to this in support of both parties and EU mediation. Thank you. I thank the representative of France for her statement. I give the floor to the representative of India. Mr. President, I would like to join other colleagues in thanking SRSG Zahir Tanin for his briefing on activities of uh, the UN Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo. I welcome His Excellency Mr. Nikola Selokovic, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Serbia. Let me begin by reiterating India's principled position of supporting the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Serbia. We believe that all outstanding issues need to be resolved through peaceful negotiations. In this regard, we take note of uh, the meetings held between Serbia and authorities in Pristina in the recent months under the auspices of the EU. However, there was no outcome from these uh, meetings. It is important that meetings are held without any preconditions. Both sides need to resume the dialogue in good faith. Both sides need to implement already signed agreements, including on the establishment of association of Serb majority municipalities and find common ground to overcome unresolved political, ethnic, and other issues. We are concerned about the recent developments, and, it's, and it is important to de-escalate tensions through engagement and dialogue. The issue of missing persons is an important humanitarian aspect, and we hope that with support of UNMIC, the authorities will be able to determine the fate of persons who are still missing. Voluntary and safe return of internally displaced persons from other countries in the region is also essential in terms of confidence building measures. UNMIC should continue together with other international presence, presences to encourage the Pristina authorities to address the concerns of all communities. We have taken note of uh, the activities of uh, the EU LEX during the reporting period. Further, as part of an international cooperation effort, we have also noted that K4 troops from 20 NATO and eight non-NATO troop contributing countries have contributed, have continued to effectively fulfill their mandate under UN Security Council Resolution 1244. Their close tactical cooperation with police authorities in Pristina and ULEX has contributed to the overall safety and security. In conclusion, Mr. President, I would like to express my appreciation that UNMIC has, con con has, has continued to implement its mandate of promoting security, stability, and respect for human rights in the region. We call on all parties to fully cooperate with UNMIC and facilitate its work. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of India for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to thank the Special Representative for his briefing and for his service to the international community and the people of Kosovo over the past six years. We also welcome the participation of Her Excellency the President of Kosovo and His Excellency the Foreign Minister of Serbia, which signals the importance both attached to a stable, secure and prosperous future for the region and all of its people. Mr. President, while there have been recent challenges to intercommunity relations in Kosovo, we note the overall positive trajectory of the situation in Kosovo set out in Mr. Tanin's briefing and in the Secretary General's most recent report. At the last meeting, we welcomed the handling of parliamentary elections by the Kosovan authorities and the successful formation of a new government. Today's meeting takes place just ahead of local elections, which begin on the 17th of October, after preparations which have been managed effectively. As we did in April, we wish to register our concern at reports of intimidation of Kosovo Serb voters. Everyone in Kosovo has the right to participate in free and fair elections without fear of intimidation. 
Similarly, we also wish to express concern at the intimidation of Kosovo Serb NGOs that work with Kosovo institutions and of individuals who seek to join Kosovo's multi-ethnic institutions. We welcome the steps taken by the Kosovo authorities on a number of issues in the reporting period. In line with its priorities, the Kosovo government has made progress in strengthening the rule of law, particularly through the endorsement of a regional anti-corruption and illicit finance roadmap and the signing off of the functional review of the rule of law strategy. The government has also made strong progress towards its target of vaccination of 60% of the population against the COVID-19 virus. Finally, we wish to highlight and welcome the significant contribution made by Kosovo to NATO's evacuation efforts in Afghanistan. There is, of course, always more to be done, and we urge the Kosovan authorities, working with all of, all of Kosovo's communities, to redouble efforts on this path. We welcome the support provided by the UN over the past six months. In particular, the mission's work on returns of displaced persons and tackling gender-based violence. We should also highlight the news of the first successful conflict-related sexual violence prosecution in July, a big step forward for both survivors and for the domestic prosecution of war crimes. Mr. President, the mission, as well as the OSCE and CAFOR, play a valuable role in documenting inter-ethnic incidents and attacks on cultural heritage in Kosovo. The UK condemns all ethnically motivated violence. Likewise, we condemn all attacks on religious sites, including churches and mosques. We welcome the reduction in such incidents, as reported by the OSCE, and hope soon to see an end to all such incidents. We emphasize our continued strong support for the EU-facilitated dialogue between Serbia and Kosovo under EU Special Representative Miroslav Lajcek, working towards a comprehensive and sustainable normalization agreement that will benefit the people of both countries. We encourage both parties to honor their dialogue commitments, engage in the dialogue in good faith, and in the interests of all communities, avoid actions and rhetoric that could escalate tensions and lead to unintended consequences, including violence. We welcome the recent agreement brokered in Brussels by EU Special Representative Lajcek. Look forward to the start of talks in Brussels next week and urge commitment from both sides to find a resolution that ensures freedom of movement. Mr. President, over the years, UNMIC has done vital work in helping Kosovo develop into a stable and inclusive democracy. Kosovo has made huge progress since 1999, when UNSCR 1244 was agreed, and conditions on the ground are now very different. It is right for a review of the role and responsibilities of UNMIC which will help it operate more effectively and better address contemporary challenges. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom for her statement. I give the floor to the representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you, Mr. President. St. Vincent and the Grenadines thank Special Representative Tannin for his detailed briefing. We commend you and the entire UNMIC team for the support provided to the people of Kosovo in stabilizing the situation in the region, mitigating the challenges related to the COVID-19 pandemic, and addressing the socioeconomic needs within the country for communities made most vulnerable. We also express appreciation for UNMIC and the United Nations team in their constructive engagement with women and youth in Kosovo, particularly through trust-building initiatives and those aimed at promoting the fight against gender-based violence. We take note of the meetings held in Brussels between the EU High Representative, Mr. Josef Borrell, the EU Special Representative for Belgrade, Pristina Dialogue, Mr. Maroslav Lajcek, the Prime Minister of Kosovo, and the Serbian President. My delegation welcomes the resumption of the EU-facilitated dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina after a prolonged suspension. The normalization of relations between the parties is crucial to the stability of the region, and we encourage the sides to continue their engagement constructively in good faith and to build on the progress achieved so far for a peaceful solution. We regret recent tensions stemming from issues surrounding license plates and condemn the, the incidents of vandalization of religious and cultural sites, as mentioned in the Secretary General's report. We call for unified actions to address the issues.
Further, St. Vincent and the Grenadines encourages the government of Serbia and the authorities in Kosovo to maintain the principles of the rule of law and good governance, uphold fundamental freedom and promote protection and respect for human rights. At the same time, we take this opportunity to reiterate the significance of women's full, equal and meaningful participation in the political and peace processes and the COVID-19 response. We encourage the greater participation of women and youth in these processes. We conclude by reaffirming our support to the critical work of UNMIC that UNMIC continues to do to fully implement its mandate in Kosovo to promote security, stability, and respect for human rights. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for her statement. I give the floor to the representative of Ireland. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and I want to begin by thanking the special representative uh, of the Secretary General Tannin for his briefing and thanks to, to you and to all your team for your valuable work. I'd like to underline right at the top Ireland's strong support for UNMIC. And I want to thank President Osmani and Minister Selakovic for being here today. As we know from experience, building peace takes time. It takes ongoing and open channels of communication. Ireland supports the Secretary General's call on both sides to engage constructively in the renewed dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina. This EU facilitated dialogue mandated by the UN is the channel through which issues and tensions between Kosovo and Serbia can and should be resolved. We continue to see the value of dialogue, including the end of September when an arrangement was reached to resolve the tension in the north of Kosovo. We urge both sides to commit to a concerted and sincere effort to progress the EU facilitated dialogue. We call on leaders in both Serbia and Kosovo to refrain from further divisive rhetoric or actions. All agreements reached under the dialogue since its beginning 10 years ago need to be implemented without delay. There have been concrete gains that have improved the daily lives of people in Kosovo and these must not be squandered. There cannot be a reset. Both sides have a responsibility to respect and implement the obligations they have made under the dialogue. A comprehensive, final and legally binding normalisation agreement is essential for the European perspective of both Serbia and Kosovo and for wider stability in the Western Balkans region. Mr. President, Kosovo, like many others, continues to be impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. We greatly appreciate UNMIC's role in supporting Kosovo's COVID response, particularly through the assistance the mission gives to the most vulnerable in Kosovo. We value UNMIC's work on the promotion of gender equality, including through progressing the WPS and YPS agendas, UNMIC's work on gender-based violence within all communities is especially significant. Gender-based violence in Kosovo has risen year on year since 2016. Those steps have been taken to prevent and combat violence against women and girls. More must be done. Ireland welcomes the record intake of women MPs elected to Parliament this year and the level of women's representation in the government. However, the gains made by women at the national level have yet to trickle down to local level. Less than 8% of candidates running for mayoral posts in the upcoming municipal elections are women. Women do not yet have the support or the access to the resources they need to run for office at local level. The barriers preventing their participation in political life and in the vital work of building peace must be dismantled without delay. Mr. President, the people of Kosovo voted for change earlier this year and for an agenda of rule of law and anti-corruption reforms, which the new government has set about tackling. We hope that the coming months will see a reinvigoration of and delivery on the EU reform agenda, particularly rule of law reforms. In this context, I also wish to underline Ireland's support for the Kosovo specialist chambers. It's Ireland's view that countering impunity for past crimes is essential in preventing future violations. 
it is vital that the authorities in Kosovo adhere to their commitment to the specialist chambers. Mr. President, UNMIC continues to play an important role through its trust building projects, bringing together members of different communities, in particular young people. UNMIC supports the most vulnerable and marginalised communities in Kosovo. Of particular note is UNMIC's work on missing persons. Progress on the issue can provide much needed comfort and solace to families of the miss missing and is an indispensable step in the process of reconciliation in Kosovo. It's important for building confidence between Kosovo and Serbia. We greatly value this and other aspects of UNMIC's work. We wish Special Representative Tanin and his team all the best in the next phase of their mission. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Ireland for her statement. I give the floor to the representative of Estonia. Thank you, Mr. President. I would also like to thank Mr. Tanin, Special Representative of the Secretary General, for his comprehensive briefing and for leading the work of UNMIC, as well as President Osmani and Foreign Minister Selak uh, Selakovic for their statements. With the COVID-19 pandemic still heavily affecting Kosovo, we appreciate UNMIC's support for Kosovo's local authorities and communities in alleviating the challenges caused by pan the pandemic, including delivery of the COVID-19 related humanitarian assistance and medical equipment to meet the needs of persons in vulnerable situations. We also commend UNMIC for its continued support for strengthening Kosovo's rule of law and democratic institutions. We welcome Kosovo's continued strategic commitment to its European path and encourage further progress. This includes taking forward reforms, particularly in the area of rule of law, the fight against corruption and organized crime, as well as to promote further socioeconomic development. We support the work of the Kosovo Specialist Chambers and the Specialist Prosecutor's Office. Full cooperation with these institutions remains essential as an important demonstration of Kosovo's commitment to the rule of law. In this regard, we would like to emphasize that European Union rule of law mission continues its monitoring and advising role to the relevant rule of law institutions in Kosovo. We welcome the agreement reached by parties on September the 30th under the facilitation of the EU Special Representative Miroslav Lajcak and following the active engagement by the EU High Representative Josep Borrell and the US Special Envoy Gabriel Escobar. To de-escalate the situation in the north of Kosovo, any further provocations or tensions that endanger the stability are unacceptable and must be avoided. The EU-facilitated dialogue is the only way forward for Kosovo and Serbia to address the, uh, and resolve all open issues. In order to make a good progress on normalization of relations, it is crucial that both countries fully respect and implement all previous agreements reached in the dialogue. With regard to the municipal elections on 17th of October in Kosovo, we trust that the process will be inclusive, credible, and transparent, as a re uh, and as a result, it would help to take further necessary future electoral reform efforts. Finally, I would like to echo the Secretary General's words on the International Peace Day that mistrust and division are dividing people apart at a time when solidarity and collaboration are needed more than ever. We must always choose peace. It is the only pathway to a better future. Therefore, we call on Serbia and Kosovo to refrain from any unilateral action or divisive rhetoric 
that could raise tensions and encourage and engage in good faith in a spirit of compromise and work on reaching a comprehensive agreement on the normalization of relations. The agreement would contribute to the stability of the whole region and allows people to work together in order to advance their common regional goals. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Estonia for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President, and thanks to Special Representative Tanin for your briefing. We appreciate your leadership and dedicated support for the Republic of Kosovo, including for addressing the continued challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. I also want to thank President Osmani and Foreign Minister Selakovic for participating in this meeting today. I want to begin by welcoming the September 30 agreement over license plate issues between Kosovo and Serbia as brokered by EU Special Representative Lecic. This agreement is a step forward for Kosovo, Serbia, and stability in the Western Balkans. This agreement is evidence that when leaders engage openly and seriously, they can find common ground benefiting all of their citizens. We encourage Kosovo and Serbia to continue building on this progress by implementing this agreement, upholding prior agreements, refraining from provocations, and recommitting to finding solutions to other issues through the EU-facilitated dialogue. The dialogue remains the best platform to resolve outstanding issues and normalize relations, eventually reaching agreement on mutual recognition. We note that UNMIC did not play a critical role in resolving the recent tensions between Kosovo and Serbia over the license plate issue. The de-escalation of this issue, with temporary support provided by K4, shows that other organizations can serve this role to better effect. Recent events, again, demonstrated that UNMIC has fulfilled its purpose as outlined in the original mandate. We should acknowledge this reality and move toward its closure. This Council has a responsibility to redirect its attention and resources to areas and issues where they are needed most. The UN can still play an important role in furthering the development of democratic norms and institutions in the region, but this role does not require sustaining a peacekeeping mission in Kosovo. The United States expresses disappointment that prior calls from council members to review and take steps to end the UNMIC mission have gone unheeded. We again call for the development of such a plan so that the council can sunset UNMIC and help transition to a more effective UN presence that helps Kosovo and the rest of the Western Balkans realize its full potential. We echo the Secretary General's call for the full and equal participation of women in political processes in Kosovo and encourage the government to continue to invest in women's advancement within civil society. In closing, the United States remains fully committed to preserving stability in the Western Balkans. We will work closely with our European partners in fostering peaceful, prosperous, multi-ethnic societies that respect the rule of law across the Western Balkans. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of United States for his statement. I now give the floor to the Russian, to the representative of the Russian Federation. <clears throat> thank you, Madam President. We wish to thank the Special Representative of the Secretary General, Zahir Tanin, for the briefing on the situation in the province and for the uh, views proposed. On the whole, we share the assessments of his report. We welcome the participation in the meeting of the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Serbia, Nikola Selakovic. Today, once again, we listened uh, from Madam Osmani 
about, we have heard about the propaganda about the peaceful, multi-ethnic Kosovo that has achieved incredible success on the path towards democracy, democracy and prosperity. These lofty words are at variance with the reality. And yet, Madam Asmani provided us with her version of what has transpi mo transpired in the past month in Kosovo. This is a version which we are not persuaded in, and yet you are misleading the Security Council and at the same time the entire international community, and your fire, fiery words will not change the obvious facts. The situation in the northern uh, regions of the Serb Autonomous uh, Province of Kosovo is of great concern. The situation has worsened considerably over the past month. In late September, in the north of the province, the Kosovo authorities uh, artificially triggered tensions, as a result of which transportation was halted across the administrative boundary line. The Serb-populated uh, region had uh, Kosovo Albanian special police units deployed, and armored uh, vehicles and heavy weaponry were also deployed. There were civilian casualties as a result. Thanks to the media of the European Union, it appeared that the question had been settled. However, as we say, the ink on these, state, on these agreements was barely dry when on 13 October, new egregious incidents took place. During the uh, violent raids targeting uh, stores and, uh, uh, and uh, pharmacies in Kosovo, Mitrovica and Zvechan, the Kosovo Special Police Units targeted civilians with long weapons, tear gas and percussion grenades. Dozens of individuals were wounded. We view such actions by Pristina as a manifestation of a deliberate policy to stoke tensions with the aim of intimidating and pressuring native Serbs in order to drive them out of Kosovo. Also clears the fact that such saber rattling also has a domestic political dimension. Nationalism and radicalism is eagerly embraced ahead of the municipal elections on 17 October. There are increasingly frequent attacks targeting uh, Serbs in the province and other non-Albanians, as well as attacks targeting their property. As compared with 2020, these numbers have virtually doubled. We welcome the responsible conduct of Belgrade in its response to Kosovar Albanian licent licentiousness. It has, it has continued to comply with all obligations under Security Council 1244 and continue to comply with all obligations under the Kumanovo Military and Technical Agreement. And it has also embraced good faith dialogue to resolve the dispute under the aegis of the European Union. We regret, however, that our Western colleagues have shied away from a frank public accounting of what transpired. They continue to call for both parties to exercise restraint, and yet it is specifically the Kosovar leaders who have advanced ultimatums for Belgrade to recognize Kosovar independence and to pay reparations of sorts. Nor have Western countries condemned uh, the greater Albanian agitation propaganda in Tirana and Pristina. There are major problems linked to the fact that some country, some parties are supporting measures to create a Kosovar army. army. This is an idea that needs to be set aside definitively, and the unacceptable utterances in this regard should be clearly qualified as such. The vague response of Western colleagues mentoring and effectively aiding and, abet and abetting Pristina uh, has uh, created the most recent uh, examples of uh, uh, impunity and inevitably has uh, spiraled into a confrontation. In this connection, we wish to recall that responsibility for the maintenance of peace and security in the province lies with uh, NATO forces for Kosovo and the EU rule of law mission. Madam President, we believe that recent developments in Kosovo, as well as uh, the open policy of Pristino in refusing to prioritize a negotiated solution, are very, is a very dangerous trend. In recent months, twice Pristina, on 15 June and 19 July, 
derailed dialogue at the high level with Bel Belgrade, which was carried out under the aegis of the European Union. There is no doubt that this new tactic, armed provocations, is also geared towards uh, derailing negotiations, the negotiating process, especially given that the next round is uh, to be dedicated to the creation of the community of Serb municipalities in Kosovo, an obligation of Pristina, which has since 2013 not been complied with. We wish to recall the unique responsibility of the European Union as it was vested with mediation functions pursuant to a resolution of the General Assembly back in 2010. For this reason, Brussels should conduct a dialogue impartially and seek to ensure that the parties unconditionally comply with their obligations, which were set out with its assistance. The standing of Brussels as a mediator is at stake here. The, our U.S. colleagues have an important role to play here insofar as they have a unique influence to bear on Pristina. We hope that they will uh, help it to acknowledge and to understand and grasp the fact that to resolve the cause of our problems, there's only one path, that is negotiations. The Russian Federation firmly advocates uh, the achievement by Belgrade and Pristina of a viable, mutually acceptable solution on the basis of UN Security Council Resolution 1244. This, first and foremost, needs to be in line with international law and to secure the approval of the United Nations Security Council insofar as this constitutes a matter of international peace and security. For the same reason, we object to the acceptance of Kosovo in international organizations. The right to represent the province uh, falls solely with the United Nations mission in Kosovo. Madam President, we support the pursuit of the steady progress of the Hague Special Court in investigating the crimes of the Kosovo Liberation Army. Twenty years have elapsed since the outbreak of armed conflict. It is past time to restore justice vis-a-vis -vis the countless innocent casualties of the Kosovo Albanian extremists. Unfortunately, justice has not yet prevailed on the case of the attack of Kosovo Albanian police officers against the Russian unmixed staff member Mr. Krasnoshokov on 28 May 2019. Against the backdrop of the Security Council and the UN Secretariat constantly uh, champion the absolute priority of safety and security of United Nations uh, personnel, delays in this case are all the more appalling. The judicial system in Kosovo, uh, Kosovo itself unfortunately continues to malfunction. This is evident in the unlawful rulings of the appeals court vis-a-vis -vis one of the leaders of the Kosovo cell, Serbs, the head of the Zvichan municipality, Ivan Todesevich, upholding the guilty verdict in violation of the Brussels agreement. Madam President, the, situ the plight of the Serb municipality, the Serb minority in Kosovo, is alarming. As a result, there is a low pace of the return of refugees and IDPs to the province. There is an urgent need to address the problem of certification of, uh, in Pristina of Serb companies who will provide and distribute, supply and distribute electricity in northern Kosovo. As the cold weather sets in, this is an issue that is genuinely of vital significance for the Serbs residing in the province. We wish to note the ongoing attacks targeting the ancient Serb cultural and religious heritage in Kosovo. In this connection, we welcome the decision of UNESCO specialized agencies to keep Serb Orthodox Church sites on the list of endangered sites. Under these unfortunate circumstances, there is a, an urgent need for the operations of the United Nations Mission in Kosovo. We support the maintenance of, of agreed-upon budget and staffing levels for UNMIC, as well as the agreed-upon frequency and format for open briefings at the Security Council on the Kosovo issue. Furthermore, we trust that all issues faced by the mission will be reflected in the next report of the Secretary General. Thank you. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of China. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to thank SRSG Tanning for his briefing and welcome the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Serbia, Mr. Sarakovic.
I also listened to the statement by Ms. Osmani. China's position on the Kosovo issue has been consistent. I like to reiterate that we respect, we respect Serbia's sovereignty and territorial integrity, understand Serbia's legitimate concerns on the issue of Kosovo, and commend Serbia for its positive efforts to find a political solution to the Kosovo issue. We support both par parties in working within the framework of the Security Council Resolution 1244 to find a solution acceptable to both parties through genuine dialogue and consultation. For some time, Kosovo's continued unilateral actions have led to an escalation in tension. China is concerned about this. Dialogue and consultation is the only solution for the Kosovo issue. Unilateral actions are not conducive to the peace and stability in Kosovo and the region, nor is it in the interest of any side. This is a common consensus in the international community. China hopes that relevant parties strengthen their control over such actions and make efforts to prevent similar incidents from happening in the future. Since June this year, Serbia and Kosovo conducted two rounds of high-level dialogues facilitated by the EU. China welcomes this. At the same time, we regret the fact that the high-level dialogues did not yield any result. China would like to encourage both sides to continue the dialogue, commend the willingness of the Serbia side to actively show willingness to engage in dialogue and hope the international community could create a favorable environment. The Council Resolution 1244 provides the political and legal basis for solving the Kosovo issue. Any actions or rhetoric that go beyond Resolution 1244 might lead the dialogue between Serbia and Kosovo off the right track and delay the final solution of the Kosovo issue. Implementing existing agreements effectively can help the parties to build mutual trust and inject momentum into solving open issues. Kosovo should follow the Brussels Agreement and effectively promote the establishment of the Association Community of Serb Majority Municipalities at an early date. Madam President, inclusive reconciliation, harmonious coexistence of all ethnic groups in Kosovo is in the fundamental interest of all ethnicities which can meet their development needs as well. Since the beginning of this year, incidents of discrimination, attacks, and harm Harassments targeting ethnic minorities in Kosovo have been on the rise, and there is an increase in tension among ethnic groups. China hopes that relevant parties take active and effective measures to protect the safety and legitimate rights and interests of Kosovo Serbs, promote national unity, and lay a solid foundation for the final solution of the Kosovo issue. Recent developments in this situation show that the Kosovo issue remains a potential security risk in the Balkan and Southeast Europe. The Council should keep its attention on the Kosovo issue. And the role of UNMIC is still very important. China commends the work of UNMIC under the leadership of S.R. Stritani and supports UNMIC according to its mandate in playing a major role in maintaining Kosovo's peace and stability responding to the COVID-19 pandemic, promoting national reconciliation, and facilitating the return of dis displaced persons. We support the provision of adequate resources to OMIC for it to implement its mandate. Thank you, Madam President. I thank the representative of China for his his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Vietnam. Thank you, Madam President. I thank Mr. Zahir Tanin, Special Representative of Secretary General and Head of United Nations Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo for his informative briefing. I would like to welcome Mr. Nikola Selakovic, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Serbia, in this meeting and thanks him for his statement. I also take note of the statement made by Ms. Osmani Saju. Vietnam welcomes the resumption of high-level dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina under facilitation of the European Union after nine months hiatus and the readiness by two parties 
to continue the discussion at technical level to explore opportunities for further high-level talks. At the same time, it is regrettable that no significant progress has been made due to divergent views from both sides. On the overall situation, we underscore the importance of peaceful dialogue and reaching a durable solution between Belgrade and Pristina in accordance with fundamental principles of international law, United Nations Charter, and Resolution 1244 for peace, stability, and long-term development of Belgrade and Pristina, the Balkans, and Europe. We therefore urge the parties to build on recent commitments resume high-level talks under EU-facilitated dialogue, and implement already signed agreements, including the Brussels Agreement. Having followed closely the situation on the ground, we are also concerned about the escalation of border tension over the issue of license plates in late September, and take note of the subsequent agreement on temporary measures. While being beyond the reporting period, these developments are worth mentioning because of their underlying causes, and the way the two sides deal with differences. We hope that Belgrade and Pristina will respect the agreement reached and work together to find a permanent solution to the issue. Finally, we commend uh, UNMIC for the important role it continues to play in the promotion of security, stability in the area, trust and confidence building measures between communities, and engagement with Belgrade and uh, between Belgrade and Pristina. As reflected in the report, the work of UNMIC in cooperation with UN agency funds and programs and international partners is crucial to supporting communities in Kosovo in responding to COVID-19 pandemic, including delivery of humanitarian assistance, medical equipment to persons in vulnerable situation, and distribution of COVID-19 testing materials, infection detection, training, and control. We encourage international community to continue to support these efforts as well as unmixed objective and mandates in the promotion of security and stability in Kosovo. I thank you. I thank the representative of Vietnam for his statement. I now give the floor to the representative of Norway. Thank you, Madam President. Let me first thank the SRSG for his briefing and welcome the report of the Secretary General. The report describes progress in some areas, but a slow pace in fighting political instability. In this, combating corruption and ensuring the independence of the judiciary should be central. And while we commend the increased efforts towards ensuring accountability and note with appreciation that the working group of transitional justice has begun, we remain concerned about de facto impunity for perpetrators of violence. We urge Kosovo's leaders to capitalize on the momentum from this year's election and consolidate the rule of law, combat corruption, and protect, protect human rights. President, all actors need to engage fully in important high-level political processes, such as the European Union-facilitated dialogue with Serbia. We encourage the parties to strengthen dialogue and to engage constructively based on the Brussels Agreement while exercising pragmatism and finding mutually acceptable compromises and respecting the commitments they have already undertaken. A permanent solution to the vehicle plates issue would be a step in the right direction. An agreement between Kosovo and Serbia on full normalization of relations is key to avoiding a frozen conflict and to achieving economic development. This is paramount to the future development of Kosovo and the region. President, the negative socio-economic and political impacts of COVID-19 on Kosovo have been significant. We see worrying trends of growing unemployment, continued loss of income, setbacks within the health and education sectors, and an increase in domestic violence. Therefore, democratization, the protection of human rights, the strengthening of the rule of law and the freedom of expression, and the fight against domestic and gender-based violence are fundamental to social transformation. We echo the Secretary General's concerns 
about the incidents of gender-based and domestic violence in Kosovo and welcome governments, institutions, civil society and international organizations ongoing efforts to address these issues, including those jointly implemented by UNMIC and other UN entities. Further progress to fight gender-based violence, ensure property rights and ease the impact of the pandemic on women's and girls is essential for Kosovo's development into democratic, multi-ethnic and prosperous society. President, we know women are key to peace. We call on parties to ensure women's full, equal, and meaningful participation in all aspects of dialogue and peace building. The increased representation of women in parliament and in the current government should serve as inspiration for the full inclusion of women in the peace dialogue. President, the question of a review of the UN mission in Kosovo has been raised. In our opinion, although the UN mission has adapted well in meeting new challenges, including the COVID-19 pandemic, we would support looking, looking at possible efficiency improvements. President, let me conclude by reiterating that there is no alternative to the EU-led process. It needs our full support. Norway will continue to work closely with EU institutions, key EU member states and the US. We call on the parties to comply with their commitments in order to consolidate the gains made and to engage constructively towards resolving the conflict. Thank you. I thank the representative of Norway for her statement. I give the floor to the representative of Mexico. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, my delegation is grateful for the briefing of the Special Representative Tanin. At the same time, we welcome the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Serbia and Ms. Osmani Sadriu. Mexico has followed with the utmost concern the events of the last few weeks in the north of the region of Kosovo that the Special Representative referred to in his briefing this morning. In this context, we acknowledge the important work carried out on the ground by the components of KFOR to ensure a safe environment and freedom of movement for all communities living in the region of Kosovo. We welcome the agreement of some temporary measures to ease tensions on the ground and the establishment of working groups to seek a lasting solution to the issue of vehicle license plates. Nonetheless, this situation is a symptom of larger scale issues which can only be resolved through dialogue between the parties. Progress in the meetings over the last few months in the framework of the European Union facilitated dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina have been minimal or lacking. We therefore call on the parties to interact constructively to reach lasting solutions, particularly on the definitive status of the region of Kosovo. With full respect for the relevant resolutions of the Security Council that represent the only framework to achieve a solution to the conflict. We agree with the Special Representative of the European Union who has called on the parties to implement all past agreements reached without any exception at least until the pending matters of the first agreement on principles governing the normalization of relations is resolved. And in this context, we will follow closely the outcomes of the meeting of chief negotiators planned for the forthcoming weeks. Mr. President, 
Turning to the reference in the report of the Special Representative to the Jakove Jakovica case, Mexico reiterates, as was done by the Special Representative himself, the importance of protecting the rights of all returnees returning to their place of origin. We urge authorities of the region of Kosovo to work with civil society organizations and local communities to generate a favorable environment for the safe, dignified and lasting return of all those who so desire and then to foster processes for reintegration and reconciliation. We would note the observation in the report on incidents of gender-based violence and levels of domestic violence. And we call on authorities in the region of Kosovo, on civil society and on international organisations to continue to promote legal, policy, legal frameworks of action and public policies to address this challenge and to ensure their full and effective implementation. Mexico insists that the full involvement of women in political processes as well as in all aspects of political and social life is central to the reconstruction of the social fabric. I conclude, Mr President, by reiterating my country's support for UNMIC in its work to establish conditions for the stabilisation and strengthening of the rule of law and security in the region in cooperation with K4 and ULEX and within the framework of Resolution 1244 of this Security Council. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Mexico for his statement. I give the floor to the representative of Tunisia. Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, I would like to thank Mr. Zahir Tanin for his valuable briefing, and we renew all our appreciation and support for his efforts at the head of the interim administration mission in Kosovo. I would also like to welcome His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Serbia, and Ms. Vyosa Osmani Sadriu. Mr. President, the unfortunate developments in northern Kosovo over the past weeks, the escalating tension and the renewed violence and clashes in Mitrovica and in the north of Kosovo, can only further complicate the situation. It is a, for addition, it's an additional challenge to the security and stability of the region. In this context, my delegation calls for de-escalation and for both parties to refrain from any unilateral or non-coordinated actions. We also call for the resumption of dialogue under international auspices. In this vein, we appreciate the rapid response of the European Union to calm the situation and establish a working group to seek a lasting solution. My delegation welcomes the resumption of the EU-facilitated dialogue between Pristina and Belgrade. We reiterate our call on both sides to continue to engage constructively in dialogue, fulfill their obligations, and implement the agreements to ensure security and stability and contribute to a, to a comprehensive political settlement. In this regard, my country expresses its support for the efforts of the Special Representative of the European Union in Kosovo, hoping that the next round of talks would bring about tangible progress on several important issues, such as the implementation of the outstanding agreements, economic cooperation, the return of displaced minorities, and the fate of the remaining missing persons. Mr. President, promoting trust and peaceful coexistence among ethnic groups is the only way to achieve peace and stability in Kosovo. Diversity can be a factor of integration and unity through the primacy of the values of peaceful dialogue, consensus, 
and reconciliation. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate once again Tunisia's support for various regional and international efforts to find a lasting and comprehensive solution in Kosovo in accordance with the fundamental principles of international law, the UN Charter and Resolution 1244 to meet the aspirations of the peoples of the region and bring about peace, security, stability and sustainable development. Thank you. I thank the representative of Tunisia for his statement. I shall now make a statement in my capacity as the representative of Kenya. I thank you, SRSG Tanin, for your briefing and thank you for your service. Kenya commends the United Nations mission in Kosovo for its efforts to promote security, stability, and respect for human rights in Kosovo and in the region in line with its mandate. We note in this regard that UNMIC has had constructive engagement with Pristina and Belgrade, all communities in Kosovo and regional and international actors. Kenya welcomes the meetings held over the summer between Belgrade and Pristina, including the 15th June high-level talks between the Prime Minister Albin Kurti and Serbian President Alexander Vucic. This is important because it is only through sustained dialogue that the normalization of relations between the two parties can be achieved. As all of us know, social media and mainstream media are increasingly important means of communication across the demographic spectrum especially when it comes to the youthful population engaging in politics. Unfortunately, its use in the spread of incitement and hate speech is well documented and has been reflected in some of the reports submitted to the Council. Kenya welcomes the pilot initiative by UNMIC to monitor incitement to hatred and hate speech on social and online media. Such an initiative, if objectively driven, has the potential to help to develop strategies to effectively counter these corrosive forms of speech. On Tuesday the 12th of this month, one of Kenya's signature events, which was chaired by His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, was on diversity, state building, and the search for peace. In that event, President Kenyatta noted that the poor management of diversity is leading to grave new threats to international peace and security. I'd like to add that on top of new threats, that it risks reigniting conflicts that we thought were in our past. We are particularly focused on not only what leaders say to one another, but what their followers say to one another. To that end, we will be holding an ARIA formula meeting later this month on addressing and countering hate speech and preventing incitement to discrimination, hostility, and violence of social, on social media. The objective will be for the Security Council to have a keen appreciation of the ways that hate speech and incitement are spread through social media, and we will be hearing from leading figures in the private sector. The reason I am focusing on speech, hatred and incitement, is because the comment by SRSG Tannen on the lack of trust between the parties, I think reflects not only between the parties, but sometimes between sections of the population. And on Tuesday the 12th, President Kenyatta observed that that mistrust leads to deterioration of trust in state institutions, and that in turn leads to the state's legitimacy weakening. And when that happens, it makes the state unable to prevent, mitigate, or resolve the conflicts that it is experiencing. With that in mind, Kenya commends to the parties 
to recommit to inserting the appreciation and embrace for diversity in all their policies. And not only in their policies, but in the growth and development of their political culture. I want to commend the participation of the women and young people who are seeking to have their voice heard, particularly if it is a voice that is bringing back together the parties together and seeing the points of convergence and common interests that we are sure still exist. I echo the call in the Secretary General's report for the provision of an enabling environment for the safe, dignified, and sustainable return and reintegration of all internally displaced persons and returnees into Kosovo society. Behind every displaced person is a tragedy, a lost opportunity, loneliness, and mental suffering. I conclude by reiterating the need for the parties to be consistent in the implementation of UN Security Council Resolution 1244 and to constructively engage in the dialogue in dialogue in order to make swift progress on a comprehensive normalization of their relations at the highest levels, but also between the peoples. I thank you. I resume my function as President of the Council. His Excellency, Mr. Nikola Selakovic, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Serbia, has asked for the floor to make a further statement. I give him the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. We have been listening the citizen of the Republic of Serbia, Mrs. Osmani Sadriu, pretending to be the so-called president of our southern autonomous province. We were listening to the stories, cynically ignorating the report given by the Secretary General and briefed by Ms. Mr. Tanin, as well as ignoring all the casualties in their recent actions. She is being silent about the fact that the fake state is based on war crimes and their founding fathers are in prison. She is being silent about Serbian casualties and ethnic cleansing evidenced by the fact that there are more than 200,000 internally displaced persons waiting for more than 22 years to return to their homes. And in the same time, bragging that they have received refugees from some far distant countries. The citizen of the Republic of Serbia, Mrs. Osmani Sadriu, has been narrating fairy tales, describing fake state as one, I quote, as one of the biggest champions of peace and stability in the world. End of the quote. Mr. President, esteemed members of the Security Council, is this something what shows the champion of peace and stability in the world? This 36 years old, Strechko Sofronievich, who was critically injured only two days ago. Fairy tales about the struggle against smuggling and illegal trade. Her main, her main arguments are lies, and it, is not some, it, and it is something normal, because she can lie. She is allowed to lie because she doesn't represent anybody but herself. Here I am representing internationally recognized independent state, member of the United Nations organization, and I cannot lie but be devoted to the truth. And the truth is, that Pristina's unilateralism is destroying all the efforts to reach sustainable, compromissive solution through the dialogue. The truth is that we have implemented obligations from the Brussels agreements and that provisional institutions of the self-government are loudly and actively rejecting to implement obligations they have taken. And that was stated by Mr. Kurti during the first round of the dialogue. 
in Brussels in June this year, as well as it was stated on September 12th by Mrs. Osmani Sadriu in an interview given to the Zidoice Zeitung, where she stated, we are not going to allow the formation of the community of Serbian municipalities. Here is the statement given, and I can give it, I can give it to all the representatives of the permanent and non-permanent members of the Security Council. Mrs. Osmani, you have to stand up when you are mentioning His Excellency Alexander Vucic, the President of the Republic of Serbia, because he is also your President. You have to pay the respect to your President. And the butchers of the Balkans, Hashim Tachi, Kadri Veseli, and the others, who've been kidnapping innocent civilians and trading with their human organs, are in prison facing with an ongoing criminal process. You have to stop lying about 20,000 of casualties of sex violence during the war. Because according to the report given here to the United Nations Security Council, the report by the Secretary General on mission of UNMIC, which was presented on the 5th of April, 2021, the status of the casualties of sex violence has been confirmed not to 20,000, but to 912 cases. And finally, the cancer in the heart of Europe is represented by the people sitting on my right, cherishing their fascist traditions from the early 1941 through the actions, well-known genocide actions of Bali Kombatare and the unique SS Skanderbeg Division. Finally, Mr. President, I invest protest against the fact that the representatives of the cancer creature in the heart of Europe were allowed to enter the hall wearing the masks with symbols of the fake state. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank His Excellency Mr. Selakovic for his statement. Ms. Vyosa Osmani Sadru has asked for the floor to make a further statement. I give her the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me perhaps start by thanking those members of Security Council that have recognized and fully supported the decisive rule of law efforts of the institutions of Kosovo, which are at the benefit of all the citizens in Kosovo, no matter their ethnicity. Let me also thank all those who emphasize the important role of women in the society. We want to work hand in hand with each and every one of you to increase the role of women in our society, in politics and elsewhere. And we are doing exactly that nowadays. Perhaps to now move on with the latest pure propaganda by Mr. Selakovic. Mr. Selakovic, I'm a proud citizen of the independent and sovereign Republic of Kosovo. The independent Republic of Kosovo isn't going anywhere. It's better that you face this reality and it will be better for all the citizens of Serbia as well so that they can see a future forward, a future in peace, a future in stability where their leaders do not wage wars and destability any longer. They have suffered from you enough, not just those of us, not just those of us. And I agree, Mr. President, there is a tragedy behind every refugee, every IDP. I have been one myself, and not just me. Over 80% of the people of my country were forced to flee the Milosevic genocidal regime, which is now being glorified every single day. And the war criminals are not just being glorified, they are being rehabilitated by the current 
Serb institutions. Mr. Selakovic speaks of the death of an old woman in the recent days in Kosovo. While I would like to express my condolences as the president of all the institutions and the president of all the people of Kosovo, no matter their ethnicity, I want to speak up about the truth here in front of all of you today. There's absolutely no report from local or international institutions. And we have such a high international presence in Kosovo who would be able to speak up on this, that this woman has died as a result of the rule of law efforts of the institutions of Kosovo. Not even an autopsy has been done so that Mr. Selakovic can come here today and speak up a distorted information with respect to what happened on Wednesday in Kosovo. He speaks about 100 ethnically motivated crimes, but in fact, he mentions the same crime plenty of times to get to that number 100. The truth of the matter is, according to international reports, from 2017 to 2020, the percentage of ethnically motivated crimes is 0.03%. It's not 3%. It's not 0.3, it's 0.03% in Kosovo. And we are committed to bringing that down to zero. Because Mr. President, members of the Security Council, the Serbs in Kosovo are not afraid of me. The Serbs in Kosovo are afraid of the parallel illegal criminal structures aided and abetted, financed and supported and turned into gangs by President Vucic by himself, no one else. And they are the ones, as mentioned by the Honorable Representative of the United Kingdom and some other states here, they are the ones who are violating all of these basic rights, including the right to free election. And they are the ones intimidating the Serbs into participating freely in elections. I want to commit in front of all of you, once again, as the president of all the people of Kosovo, that we will do everything in our power to protect the Serbs of Kosovo from these attacks from illegal and criminal structures. Mr. Selakovic has also mentioned the case of Todosijevic. In that case, the person that was, of course, in front of the courts of Kosovo was indicted for denying war crimes in full compliance with what the European Court of Human Rights has said plenty of times, that you cannot deny genocide, you cannot deny war crimes, because in that way, you contribute to hate speech, you contribute to impunity, and you contribute to further tensions. But it was the agreement that he was referring to earlier that provided that these special panels would only be for the Serb majority areas, Pristina, is not a Serb majority area, it's the capital, capital of Kosovo and does not fall within the agreement that would provide for Serb majority panels in the court. So we have fully respected the agreement as signed in Brussels. Perhaps to talk a little bit about the so-called attacks on churches, let me quote NATO again. NATO, through their representatives in K4 in Kosovo, have publicly stated recently that in the past 10 years, I'm quoting, in the past 10 years, there has been no serious incident against the Dichani Monastery or other churches in Kosovo. This is the truth. And in fact, it is Kosovo police, the multi-ethnic Kosovo police of the independent Kosovo, that is securing most of these churches, except for the Dichani, where K4 is involved, and K4 again is confirming that no serious incident has happened that there in the past decade or so. So ladies and gentlemen, Serbia should start countering impunity and it should stop glorifying war criminals and rehabilitating them. Yes, Kosovo has fully supported the establishment of the specialist chambers. No other country in the history of the world has shown such commitment to international justice. All of the leaders of Kosovo have voluntarily cooperated with this tribunal. And do you know why? Because we have nothing to hide. We have nothing to hide. The truth has happened in front of your eyes. And the truth is, NATO, democratic countries around the world, intervened 
to stop Serb genocide. There is a truth that cannot be revised through Serbia's and their allies' history revisionism projects, and that is we have been the victims and Serbs were the aggressors. We never played the game of collective blame, which is why Kosovo is committed to the dialogue, and I want to reassure you all of that, not just sitting at the table, but actively engaging, putting forward proposals that would bring more peace and stability to the region. But since Mr. Selakovic is abusing the time to speak in front of you today, to abuse the names of Serbs, the citizens that I proudly represent, the Serbs of Kosovo, Albanians of Kosovo, Turks of Kosovo, Roma of Kosovo, Ashkalis of Kosovo, Egyptians of Kosovo, Goranis of Kosovo, and everyone else who is welcomed and is living peacefully in Kosovo, let me perhaps also mention some names. Let me start with Lirie Mucholi, six months old. Lirie, her name means freedom. Together with 53 members of her family, out of which the majority, majority little children, under seven, with their moms and their grandmothers, they were trying to flee the Milosevic regime from their house during the war. They were not allowed by the military and by the police that at that time were taking orders also by the Minister of Interior, now turned into Speaker of Parliament in Serbia, the Minister of Propaganda, now turned into President of Serbia, and plenty of others. They were returned back to a little room in their house where they were first all executed, 54 people, most of them little children. And as if that was not enough, they turned back and they burned them down while some of the little kids as young as two were still alive, injured but still alive, they were burned down alive. And as if that was not enough, they returned again to burn them down for a second time. And then for the third time, they put fire to the entire house. If you go to that house today, Mr. Selakovic, and I invite you as the president of the Republic of Kosovo to go and kneel because that's, in the words of Willy Brandt, that's what a human de being does when words can do no justice, to kneel in front of this grave. 54 people, most of them little children, including six-month-old Lirie Mocholi, were burned down three times. What was their crime, Mr. Selakovic? Did you ever apologize? So let me give you another name, Dragan Obradovich, and another one, Srećko Sofronijevic. According to the Humanitarian Law Center located in Belgrade, these are the two people who ordered the crimes. Of course, they are in Serbia. Of course, they have been rehabilitated. Of course, they were given excellent jobs by the new regime in Serbia. And of course, impunity continues. I can continue on and on with names of people, with names of families, the wounds of which are still open because Serbia is still sleeping on mass graves. This is the map. This is the map of mass graves found in Serbia so far. And according to their late president, Boris Tadic, who was killed in Serbia, there are plenty more mass graves in this country. I urge Serbia to open these mass graves. We want our loved ones back. We want them home. We want the kids of the grieving mothers back home. We want the mothers to have a place where they can lay a flower on the empty graves of more than 1,600 people. And I urge you all to never forget so that this cannot be a slogan any longer. Never forget what the true face of the Serbian regime is. And perhaps for you, Mr. Selakovic, to conclude, in the words of John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States, let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill, 
that we should, shall pay any price, bear any burden, in order to, in order to secure the survival and the success of our liberty. You cannot intimidate us. Freedom is in our DNA. Thank you. I thank Ms. Osmani Sadru for her statement. Uh, His Excellency Mr. Nikola Selakovic, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Serbia, has asked for, for the floor to make a further statement. I want to just say uh, the council schedule is running behind, and so please keep your further statement to three minutes, and it will be the final statement. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I am really concerned about the minds of Mrs. Osmani. She said a plenty of flies. Mrs. Osmani, this is Srećko Sofronijević. This is the guy your criminals have shot in his back only two days ago. He's not in Belgrade. He's not ordering anything. He is one ordinary citizen. This is Srećko Sofronijević, Mrs. Osmani. And please stop lying. Boris Tadic, he's the former president of the Republic of Serbia. Thanks God. He's in well condition. He lives in Belgrade. He wasn't killed, as you stated. What are you saying? What are you saying? The so-called attacks on Serbian churches. Fifteen churches has been robbed and attacked during the last nine months. Fifteen of them. You have ruined more than 19 graveyards, cemeteries, Serbian Christian Orthodox cemeteries. They were guilty for something. You've been speaking about your casualties. I'm sorry about that. But what about the family Shutakovic? Mother, father, and three kids. Their renames were recently found out in Jakovica Industrial Zone. There are no other members. All the family members were killed. You haven't been in highly in the mountains 22 years ago because you was only the ref a refugee. You've been there because you have been with the terrorists. According to the terrorist list of CIA from 1997, the so-called KLA was proclaimed as a terrorist organization. And please do not speak to us about the history revisionism projects. We know very well that you cannot hide the SS division and the traditions of Bali Kombatare, who've been some of the most famous working for the Nazis during the Second World War. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for the opportunity to say these words. I thank His Excellency Mr. Selakovic for his statement. Ms. Vyosa Osmani Sadru has asked for the floor to make a further statement. As I said, please keep your statement to three minutes, and it shall be the final statement. I give her the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I will try to be short. Of course, Mr. Selakovic cannot understand what victims of the war go through. Yes, I was for months after being forced to flee my home by the Serbian regime, alongside hundreds of thousands of other Kosovars, was hiding in the mountains for months. Only in May 1999 were my family and I able to leave for Montenegro, where I stayed as a refugee for a short time. So I both know what it means to be an IDP, an internally displaced person, because of their terror and genocide, as well as what it is to be a refugee, which is why we have opened our hearts and minds to the people of Afghanistan. Of course, I was thinking about 
Mr. Džinđić, not Mr. Tadić, but the late president of Serbia, the truth remains that the late president of Serbia, who was killed in Serbia, actually spoke of these mass graves. His closest collaborators nowadays are confirming that, and what the current Speaker of Parliament in Serbia does publicly, he threatens Serbs, Serb citizens, who are cooperating with the international community to tell about the whereabouts of these mass graves. He publicly threatened them on national TV that those Serbs who would be speaking about the mass graves and their whereabouts, that they would be a, uh, uh, mentioned as tra uh, traitors of the nation. This kind of impunity does not happen anywhere in the world. And of course, Mr. Selakovic can continue with his propaganda, and of course, he can try to insult. But as I mentioned at the very beginning, the truth cannot be changed because it has happened in front of your eyes. And of course, I did not mention Sresko, Srečko Sofronievich as a member of the, as, of the people that were involved back in 1999. I did mention him to show his propaganda, Mr. Selakovic's propaganda, because in fact, there is absolutely no proof that he has been shot by the Kosovo police. Absolutely no proof. Ladies and gentlemen, the embassies of the countries that are present in the Republic of Kosovo know the facts. They have been public about the facts. They have shown full support for Kosovo's rule of law efforts in the ground. I invite all of you who are in doubt to recognize our young republic, to recognize the suffering of the people of Kosovo, to recognize a reality of an independent and sovereign country that is never to change. And come to our country. See it for yourselves, excellencies. See what is going on in the ground. See the suffering. See the deep wounds that are still open because there has been no justice for the Serb perpetrators. But at the same time, see the great and outstanding potential of the youth of Kosovo. See what we can do. Let us join you around the table as a sovereign nation that can give so much to the world. Thank you very much. I thank Ms. Osmani Sadriu for her statement. There are no more names inscribed on the list of speakers. The meeting is adjourned.